Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com quick tutorial. Today's tip is on using smart objects, but what the difference is between smart object and smart object via copy, because there, there's a nuance there that isn't really explained by Photoshop. So I'm using this as an example, because this is the primary example that I run into where this difference is very apparent. So in Photoshop, if you were to have an object such as we'll say this apple, uh, and I were to do uh, a duplicate layer of this apple, which you would consider copying it or duplicating it, what's really happening is it's just a different instance of this very first apple. So if I go into this smart object and do something to it, so we'll do a drastic thing to it and hit save. When I go back, both layers actually have this happen to it. So it's a little hard to see here, but you can see both layers got affected. Um, and that can be really annoying if you're working with smart objects, but you want to have, you know, different things happening in each one, whether that's cloning 10 different apples or 10 different shoes, or, you know, you're trying to make some sort of effect, but you don't want it to be tethered to the same asset. Um, and that's where smart object via copy comes in. So in this instance, We've got an apple that was, we'll say, photographed on yellow, but then say I want to put it on this blue color, my inclination would be to clip it out and then set the shadow color on linear burn or multiply, which lets the shadow multiply through to the back. But since it was photographed on yellow, it's making this putrid green color as it blends in with the blue. So if I just did, uh, if I had my apple here and I did duplicate and copied it and then deleted this layer mask and set it on multiply. I might be inclined to want to take the saturation out of this and brighten it up a bit so that that shadow isn't pukey green and it's white instead. Uh, but if I jump in here and pull the saturation out of it and then turn the levels up so that this turns white, now I'm like, perfect, I can use this shadow data. I hit save, I close it, but oh crap, now the apple from my top layer has been affected as well. The answer is that instead of doing smart object, you do smart object via copy. What that does is produce another smart object with all of the same data and same information, but it's not tied to that very first layer in any way. So now if I go into my smart object and make some edits and hit save, I actually have two different smart objects here. I have one that was unaffected and one that I just drew on. Uh, and the reason that that can come in super in handy is for instances like this, where like maybe I wanna keep that shadow data. Now I can just hop into the shadow, suck out the saturation, brighten it up so that it's white, save it, close it. And now I've got the unaffected apple here. The shadow apple here, I can safely set that on multiply and it will go through, oops, I've got to delete the layer mask so you can see what I'm doing. And that shadow data will safely go through and then allow me to pick a different background color without having fear of um, that initial yellow color that it was shot on affecting the color underneath. So I do this little trick probably 10 times a day when I'm adjusting photos and trying to preserve shadows. Uh, and that could be because maybe the initial photo was shot on slightly off colored paper or it's shot on textured paper or the lighting conditions weren't quite pure white, whatever that may be. Um, this allows you to preserve the original asset, retain that original sh shadow data, and then just have two different smart objects, which you can link together with a little chain. And then if you ever move them around, they still are retained together. Um, and this is also super helpful if you're ever resizing things and say you make another copy, but you want um, to manipulate the shadows of the objects. You can actually then throw things like layer masks on just the shadow. And that allows you to sort of manipulate the shadows um, of the objects without manipulating the objects themselves. So not only is it helpful to quickly produce uh, editable layers, but it allows more editing functionality later on down the line as you start getting into more complex scenes. So that's the tip. 
If you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button, or if you want more of these types of tutorials, feel free to subscribe to my channel. As always, if you have questions or topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.